Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is Many a True Nerd, and welcome to our second birthday special. I know, two years, two years old, amazing. Last time, uh, this time last year when we did this sort of celebration, we were, I think it was, yeah, it was, it was about 6,000 subscribers, 6,000, and 50, 53 at the time of recording, it'll probably be 54 by the time this goes out. Utterly amazing, and obviously, as some of you will remember, last year when we did the uh, the birthday special, we made a cake, and that's fine. That was good. That went very, very well indeed. Click on the card on screen if you've never seen that, by the way. Uh, but to this year, this year we couldn't just make a cake. We couldn't just make a cake. That would be way, way too easy. So instead, instead, I looked up what is the most difficult dessert to make in the world. And I found a dessert. I'm going to be trying to make, apparently an incredibly complex dessert, Baked Alaska. Now this is apparently incredibly difficult, so obviously I'm going to be requiring some help from this, so instead I've decided I have recruited Claire to come in and help me today. So, uh, Claire? 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 You're on your own for this one. Right, so some pansy recipes for baked Alaska say that you should start with a pre-prepared uh, base or like pre-prepared ice cream. I'm not going to do any of that. I'm going to make everything, everything from scratch. There is going to be freshly made base, freshly made ice cream and freshly made meringue. For those of you who do not know, a baked Alaska is a pastry base with ice cream in it and a meringue topping and I'm going to make every single one of those from scratch. Oh yes! So the problem with baked Alaska is it takes absolutely bloody ages so I'm going to need to try and speed this up a little bit by skipping certain large and unnecessary steps like measuring volumes. I'm just going to be estimating because that will be faster because seriously this thing takes bloody forever. So I've got this double cream that's 600 millilitres I need about half of that about half of eh, that's halfish and then I got some milk okay I need like half a pint of that that's two pints so about a Quarter, quarter ish. It's, it's, it's about no, a bit more, bit more, bit more, bit more, bit more, bit more. It's all, it's all dairy. It's all dairy. It's fine. Okay, next it calls for a vanilla pod, but I don't know what that is and I don't have one. So what I've got instead is I've got some vanilla extract. So I'm just going to put some of that in. I've not got much, but I don't know how much you need. Nah, that, that'll do. Whatever that much, that will do. I just added that much. Right, it doesn't actually say whisk this or anything, so I'm just going to swish it for a bit. There we go, that's probably mixed. And now that apparently gets heated for, like, until it's almost boiling. Which is a really unhelpful instruction, because how am I supposed to know it's almost boiling until it's boiled, in which case it's too late. But whatever, I'm going to boil- oh no, no, not! I'm not going to boil it. Okay, there's steam and little bubbles coming from around the outside, I'm going to call that done. I'm going to say that's done now. So now that just gets put to one side to just be over there, I guess. It just has to cool for a bit. Okay, while that's doing that, I now have to uh, create the base that's going to be like the cake that's in actually the Alaska. So while well, that's all cooling. So 125 grams of butter, right, done. And it says that needs to be creamed until soft, which you use like a food mixer for. But Claire tells me I'm not allowed to touch her food mixer because she doesn't trust me not to break it, which is sensible. So I'm going to find some other way of creaming this butter. Now I don't know if this is right, but this seems like a good way. So just... yeah, yeah, there we go. There we go. This is... this is... this is... yeah. I think... That's actually worked surprisingly well. And then into that we add about a quarter of this sugar. This is uh, 500 grams on 125. So about a quarter. Oh, blimey, is that? Oh, it was about a bit more. There we go. That'll probably do. Now next I've got to beat this mixture. Uh, obviously some of you may recall from the previous video, um, when I last made a cake about a year ago I did break Claire's whisk and she never quite forgave me for that actually. But don't worry, I have bought a new whisk, specially, that's going to get its debut today. And I'm going to be honest, it looked slightly larger when I actually, um, when I actually, uh, 
ordered it. But that's fine, it'll still do the job, it's just a, you know, never judge a man by the size of his whisk. I tell you what, Little Whisk is getting the job done. We have got an actually quite good looking mixture there, I think. Look at that, look at that, that's, that's perfect. The question then is, the problem is about half the mixture is now inside the whisk. I don't know how you, how do you get it out? Just like they do on MasterChef. Okay, there we go. Beautiful. Now next, I'm going to make this a chocolate base by adding in some melted chocolate. And I have gone for the flipping good stuff. Extra dark chocolate and orange. I know. See, this, this is going to be nice. I'm using the best ingredients. I'm like an army that showed up with the best troops. Uh, the recipe says to melt this chocolate by putting it in a bowl above a pan of simmering water to melt, which is bloody ridiculous. I swear, it's like they don't want people to cook or something. Two minutes later, we got ourselves melted chocolate. It said it was going to take half an hour. I have saved so much time already. Okay, now we just added the most chocolate. Ow! Okay, right, sorry, I forgot that was hot. It just came out of the microwave. Using a towel or oven gloves, we just add that into the thing as the chocolate goes in. And then that just gets beaten in two. So, use way too much. This feels like it's very liquid for the amount of actual... This feels like there's a huge amount of chocolate to... Hang on, let me just check my measurements. Oh, it's because I haven't added the flour yet. Right, let's just add in some flour. It says sift it, but it looks it looks pretty fine. There's not that much wrong with it. It also says fold in the flour, but I don't know what that means. So I'm just going to beat, but like gently, gently beat. It's going to be fine. See? See, this is now starting to feel a bit more like a cake mixture. And this is fine. This is the bit we should absolutely nail. We made a cake last year and it was brilliant. Yeah, fine. Just put the rest of it. It's fine. It's fine. Me and my tiny whisk, we will be able to handle anything. Me and the tiny whisk, there is nothing we cannot do. Okay, I feel like that. That's actually pretty good, ready to go. Uh, yeah, I feel like that's pretty good, ready to go cake batter. Now, next step it says is to put this into a prepared cake tin. It doesn't actually say how to prepare a cake tin. Claire, help me. Claire, how do you prepare a cake tin? Would you also, where are the cake tins? In the cupboard. Right, we have a cupboard for cake tins. Which one? This one. Huh. Okay, Claire showed up and she showed me where the baking tins are and also what a baking tin is and also what baking paper is or whatever, what's it called? Baking, baking. Parchment paper. Pa yes, that. And that I stick it to the baking tin with butter. So, so that, that, that's how that is. Okay, I'm going to be honest, it doesn't actually look like a huge amount of cake to me. But that's what we got. I've realised the small problem I may run into, which is I'm blending two recipes here, one of which told me how to make the ice cream and one of which told me how to make the cake base, and I didn't check that the size of the baked Alaska they were supposed to be producing was the same, which could be part of the problem here. I may be making two different sized Alaskas. All right, anyway, this goes in the oven, 180 degrees C uh, for 20 to 25 minutes, or some amount of time close to that. Okay, while that's in the oven, that means we can turn our attention back to the ice cream, because the mixture I heated earlier is now done. First things first is I'm going to need three egg yolks. That's pretty simple, all things considered. That's nice. Okay, oh, that was, okay, wait. That's the opposite of, that's the, that's the white, not the yolk. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I've got an idea, I've got an idea. Yolk goes in what used to be the flour thing, and the white can go in, the, I'm gonna run out of bowls soon. Really, I actually don't have that many bowls. Uh, but that's fine. This is going to be fine. Just do that. Yeah, white. Break it open. White, 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 white. And joke. There we go. That one was better. Okay, now into that, add in a uh, hundred ish grams of sugar. There's probably about 400. There's about a quarter of what's left. And it's just, just uh, it's a bit more. Yeah, there we go. That's probably ish. I've run out of the whisk, obviously the whisk got other stuff on it, so I'm just gonna have to use a fork for this, but a fork worked fine last time. So now we've just got sugar and egg yolk. It says to do this until it's pale and thickened. The problem is, it's kind of not 
looking particularly pale to me. It's looking very, very orange, in fact. Let me just check if it's definitely supposed to use yolks. Yeah, it says yolks. Definitely says yolks. Alright, just keep going then. Decides I may not have put in enough sugar, because sugar's white and egg yolks aren't. So we're going to a bit more sugar, and that, that will help. There we go. It's more pale than it was, anyway. Let's just say that. It's more pale than it was. Okay, now it says about a quarter of this cream mixture I made earlier now goes in. Quarterish. All right, it's... It probably wasn't a quarter. Never mind. Never mind. It was, it was not the whole lot. It was not the whole lot. Now I just need to whisk this in really quite slowly because this isn't a large bowl. And while that's happening, the remaining cream mixture has to go and be reheated back up to max. Uh, this time it actually needs to boil, so I'm simultaneously boiling the rest of this cream mixture. Okay, the problem is it doesn't say what colour or consistency the egg mixture is supposed to be when I'm done whisking. So I'm going to assume that's done, because it seems pretty clear and all mixed together. So if it's all mixed together, that's fine. Meanwhile, the rest of the cream mixture, that has indeed boiled. Hang on. See? See? That's totally boiling over there. So I'm going to move this into this pan, because then I've actually got more space. So I'm, going to just, I'm just going to move it into this pan, which I'll be using in a second anyway. Right. So now, now, wait, now, now this is, this is the boiled cream mixture, and this is the, the, the egg and most of the, well, some of the cream mixture. So now, some of this just goes in here, for some reason, I don't even bloody know, and, and we mix them together. So now that, now that also gets whisked. And the next time you go to an ice cream parlour, say thank you to the bloke, because this is a bloody pain. This is how you make ice cream? So bloody, how does this even smell? Ahem! <coughs> right! I'm gonna be honest, it doesn't smell great. I'm not getting vanilla so much as like egg. Like scrambled egg, actually. It kind of smells more like scrambled egg than vanilla ice cream. So I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent on this. Right, I've got a problem. I've just checked the next steps of the ingredient and apparently the next step is that um, I'm supposed to leave this in a fridge overnight, then put it into my ice cream maker in the morning. But I've got a few problems. The first of which is I need to do this today. The second of which is I don't have an ice cream maker. So, you know, problems. Right, I've had a think, I've got a solution. Ta-da! There we go, I've, I've, I've gone out and I've bought some ice cream. Um, and even better, this is honeycomb dairy ice cream, and it's made with fresh whole milk and clotted cream in Cornwall, which, uh, so that's good. Cornwall, obviously everyone knows about my love of Cornwall. So, yes, we've got that now. This, I feel, is safer than the slightly suspect scrambled egg mixture. So, but, but we're still going to make the cake, and we're still going to make our own meringue. It's just the ice cream hasn't quite worked. I probably should have read the instructions before I began, actually, shouldn't I? Okay, the cake after 25 minutes is now ready to come out of the oven, so we have our cake base. It looks... Okay, it's a little bit slimmer than I was expecting, but I guess we'll have to make do. Claire's also drawn my attention to the fact that we own this thing, which is some form of cake stand, which I think could be quite useful. We'll use that in a minute, but first... We have to get the cake out of its thing. Luckily, we've got like a really good cake tin here, which we can therefore do that, and then just open the cake tin. So now we can just open the... Wait, hang on, what? Oh no, it doesn't open all the way, it just opens a bit. Right, okay, okay, okay. I lift the cake, I lift these bits off. That bit comes away. All right, many our cake tins work as we go along here. That bit can slide out. All right, now I just need to get this bit, and this is problem. How do I get this bit off? Uh oh, this. Uh oh, oh that's a crack. That's a crack. That's that's a crack. Um, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Um, Claire can't help me with this bit. Claire's doing something with her hair. Um, knife. I'm gonna use a knife. I'm gonna use a knife to to get under the cake. And then, lift the cake. I see. I see. Uh-oh. 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 
Uh oh, no. That cake is clearly breaking apart. Um, I'm just gonna let this set. I'm gonna let this cake set like this now for a bit. That's fine. This cake can just set here for like a bit of time. Once it's cooled, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. So I'm just gonna put that back there and that's going to be okay. Now while that's cooling at the back there, we've got more things to get on with, which is we've got to now make the meringue that's going to go on top of the ice cream that's gonna go on top of the cake base. So this time I need three egg whites, which I could have saved from earlier when I got the egg yolk. Oh well, never mind. <laughs> more eggs. We need more eggs. We'll just, we'll just use more eggs, it'll be fine. Now this time, we're keeping just the whites. We're keeping just the whites and we're getting rid of the yolk, okay? Okay, next it says now whisk the egg whites, just the egg whites on their own, just whisk those until they form soft peaks when the whisk is removed. I don't know. I've not added anything else. It specifically says not to have added the sugar yet. This is what it says. I feel like I'm just stirring yellow water here, but... All right, I'll go for it. I mean, when it says soft peaks, if I do this, and like, like that, it kind of, is that a soft peak? Is that a peak or is it because it's not standing? I don't know if that's a, I'm going to keep going for a couple of minutes just to see if it does. Well, I'm just going to assume that this is, the fact it does this is good enough and move on. So, um, 200 grams of sugar, by the way, I should mention, 200 grams of sugar is seven ounces if you're a time traveler from the distant past and thus use measurements that don't make any sense. That's about half of what I've got here. That's a bit more. That's a bit more. Yeah, that's probably fine. Um, so now we just mix the egg whites and this together. And I've got to keep going until they form hard peaks, because we did so well with the soft peaks, and so now we just need to do this with hard peaks. So I'm assuming means like I do this and it like holds its it like holds its shape. Is that enough sugar? There's a bit more, sure why not? That's probably that's probably fine. The mixture's definitely thickening, which is what I want it to do. So that's a good sign. Right, I've been doing this for a few minutes now, and I'm going to be honest, it doesn't seem to be making much progress. And it's definitely not forming anything related to a stiff peak. It's not even moving in the direction of a stiff peak. And it's not even really a, a soft peak yet, which is kind of unfortunate. Um, right, what are the instructions? The instructions say that I need to do this until the mixture is clearly glossy and satiny. Satiny, as in like, as in like the material satin. What does material, what does material satin even even look like? I don't know. Hang on, hang on. Claire, do you have anything that's made out of satin? I've got the mixture here, and I've got this handkerchief, which is made of satin. I'm gonna be honest, they don't look desperately similar yet. I mean, with the throff on top, yes, but when you remove the throff, this is satin, and that's a yellow liquid. So... Claire's, Claire's stepped back into the kitchen briefly to, to well, basically, watch me use the K-Mix, because I, I still can't be trusted, but apparently I'm going to need the K-Mix if this is going to work, because it's not going to work the manual way. If this thing isn't in the Fallout 4 launch trailer, I'm going to be disappointed. This is apparently what a soft peak looks like. We're gonna start adding in sugar now. Yeah, sure, why not? Yeah, just throw it all in, it's fine. The more sugar, the better. Right, so you can probably hear the K mix is still on in the background, keeping the meringue going. While that's happening, however, it's time to actually assemble the cake. All the bits have to assemble. And when I mean all the bits, I mean all the bits that survived. So. I've got the delicious ice cream that I got from a supermarket here, but it's really good stuff, so it's fine. So what I'm going to do is I just need to, uh, I need to cut that up into bits. So I'm using about half a litre of really nice quality ice cream here. About half a litre of it. It's going to be great. So I've got all this ice cream. I'm just going to, I'm just going to kind of cut it up into little bits, put them on, and then kind of let it just melt a little bit. I need it to be loose enough that it'll all fit together at the end, at the end of the day. Then it'll all be fine. 
I'm running out of implements, by the way, which is why I'm now using a bread knife for spreading ice cream. So I don't, I don't really have much else that's left. Um, we're kind of, we're kind of out of everything else. So that's the ice cream. I'm just going to smooth it out now. Right, so as you can probably hear, um, the sound of the K-Mix is no longer there. That is because it is done. We have got what clearly looks like meringue. It's kind of meringue shaped. You can see it's got peaks. It's actually got peaks, exactly as requested. Meanwhile, our cake base is here. Our ice cream has slightly melted, so it's spread out slightly. I've broken a bit of the side of the cake, but that's fine. I can patch that with meringue. So now what I need to do is I just need to get meringue all over this. It just needs to go in like little peaks and troughs all over this cake and we have to completely coat the whole thing right down to the baking tray yeah we need to actually cover up the base right down to the baking tray no ice cream can be exposed because this thing is about to go in the oven again despite the fact that you've probably noticed it has ice cream in it it strikes me as a terrible idea i'm going to use a small spoon for the small adjustments to make sure that everything's as it should be because I'm worried that I need to completely cover up everything with like, and it says to do it in like peaks and troughs but to be honest I probably shouldn't worry too much about the artistry you notice I've also slid um, the cake base onto a single baking tray that has like no lip on it so when I do get this back out of the oven I'll be able to get it out I'm slightly worried about the integrity of my cake base it is like at the edge of falling apart definitely okay so that's it that is the baked Alaska in its pre-cooked format the cooked base then the ice cream within it and then covering up the ice cream entirely this layer of meringue that goes right down to the bottom no ice cream should be exposed because I'm about to put this in the oven at 220 degrees C which sounds like madness and it is madness but let's let's just do that anyway shall we there she is in the oven right godspeed you magnificent bastard look at the devastation that i have wrought i hope this works by the way because i don't have enough ingredients to give another shot at this okay you can see the very first bits of brown are starting to appear there we are about 30 seconds out from pulling this bastard out of the oven 30 seconds all right she's ready to come she is totally ready we're gonna get her out now she's gone brown I don't see any huge ridiculous signs of leakage. There's no like ice cream seeping out from her. That's a really good sign. Right, serving plate, she needs to be moved straight onto that if she can be. Just need to get her off and onto the serving plate. Oh, oh, uh, it's kind of working. It hasn't collapsed. It has not, co that bit has, but the rest of it hasn't. The rest of it has not collapsed. Okay, I think we're, I think we've got it. I think we've, yeah, that actually feels like, mar ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you, not actually leaking that much, the many a true nerd, second anniversary, baked Alaska, the hardest dessert in the world to make. Ta-da! Obviously very important that we try this thing. Let's, let's get a slice. Let's get a slice in. It actually is cutting, which is great news, which is great news. Let's just get a slice of this out. Yeah, okay. This is what it looks like. It's meringue, ice cream, and a chocolate cake base. There we are. Let's just have a look see at that. So yeah, you've got the chocolate cake base that's holding together. You can see you've got the ice in there. You've got the meringue as well. Lovely. Right, I'm going to I'm gonna have the first taste now of the first taste of this. See how this works out. That's actually quite nice. That's actually edible. That's, that's amazing. The round's not too starchy. Ice cream tastes nice, flavour comes through. The case of ice cream is actually not a bad bait to ask her. Claire! Claire, I actually did a good thing. Okay, I've got Claire here for a second opinion. Claire, what are you thinking of the bait to ask her? Good. See? Yeah. That's not bad. That's actually, it's held together. Mm -hmm. The meringue is actually meringue. What do you, okay, do you think the meringue's good? Yeah. Magnificent. Yeah, very good. Ah, you see, you see someone who actually vaguely knows what they're doing has commented. Yeah, one more ice cream from the middle though. One more ice cream from the middle. Hasn't melted too much. I think it's actually worked together quite well. I've actually made a baked Alaska. I was thinking this was going to be horrendous failure. I was kind of assuming in fact. 
Well, the proof, as they say, is in the pudding, or the pudding is in the eating, or the... I, I forget how that idiom goes. But, Claire has taken a big second slice, which I think is pretty conclusive proof that baked laxi is actually okay. And I will have another slice of this as well. Oh my goodness, it's actually... I'm I'm so pleased. Look, look at this magnificent thing. It's a bit... Oh, it's a bit liquid. But it's, it's ice cream in the oven, for goodness sake, it's going to be. But there we go, ladies and gentlemen. That was just another Cooking with John video. I know, I've, I've literally, I've only done three of these. The risotto, the cake, and now this. Yet it seems to be one that is mysteriously regularly requested. People want more Cooking with John. So I don't know, let me know if you want even more Cooking with John, and maybe I'll try and make this like a, I don't know, monthly or quarterly or something, something, something -y event. But yes, for the moment, for the moment, ah, oh, two years. Too f it feels like so much longer in some ways. It feels, some ways it feels like that was just yesterday that I just started this off and it feels kind of really surreal. It's kind of got as big as it has. And sometimes it feels like I've been just doing this forever. It just feels like such a natural part of my life now. It's such a, a weird, weird thing. But thank you. This is this is, this is is kind of the, the time of the year especially where I do just feel very, very thankful. So thank you, everyone who's hung around. People who have been here from the very beginning. People who've you know, joined more recently. I love you all. I love you all. It's wonderful. This is a wonderful thing for me to do, a wonderful, enjoyable part of my life now. And just thank you to everyone for hanging around these past two years. And uh, here's to here's to many more. I'm already already starting to think about what I can do for the third anniversary, quite frankly. So uh, who knows? And maybe, maybe we will do more cooking with John uh, before that point. But, uh, but that is, that is for the future. And in the meantime, as always, thank you very much for watching, thank you very much for listening, and I've been John, this has been Many a True Nerd, and this has been two years of Many a True Nerd, celebrated with, apparently, the hardest dessert in the world to make, which we have done spectacularly well, if I do say so myself, Baked Alaska. Thank you very much, and goodbye.